when I start my group coaching, we'll have a private mastermind Facebook group just for the women. We are able to give them a little peek into what it's really like to be blind. Now, please welcome from the blind grind, Serena Olson and Lisa Maria Martinez. We hope you enjoy. You will learn about blindness and you will just see that it's just a part of who you are. (laughs) I'm excited that the educational field is telling people to listen to us. We're homework. (laughs) (laughs) Recording in progress. It sounds like you're on a big set somewhere and there's someone in some booth somewhere that says that and we're all like, yeah, that's our sound crew. <laughs> yeah. Recording in process. <laughs> Getting into position. Our makeup people are just walking away from us now. We're done. <laughs> Welcome to Blind Abilities. I'm Jeff Thompson. And today in the studio, we got a team. Oh, they've been together for 20 some years, it seems like. Yeah. They have a Facebook live show that I caught up with, and it's called The Blind Grind. They have so many different names, and they're all over the blog area. They're two sassy blind bloggers, Serena Olson and Lisa Maria Martinez from The Blind Grind. Thank you so much for coming to the show. How are you both doing? Awesome. Fantastic. Pretty good. It's a little chilly today, though. So I have my unicorn socks on. <laughs> It isn't the company that we have here, is it? No, no. (laughs) (laughs) Never the company. (laughs) There you go. A chili in California. What is it, like 70? (laughs) Right. It's like upper 50s and raining. (laughs) While the rest of the world was having a heat wave, it was literally like 68 to 70 degrees out here and, and beautiful. Usually when a heat wave washes over anywhere, California gets a big chunk of it. And somehow, at least out here on the coast, like we kept our cool <laughs> weather privilege. <laughs> well, well, I'm glad to see you got some rain out there after all yes, the fires and everything. we so needed the rain. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was making the notes for this and I should have got it like a spreadsheet to try and connect these names up. We have the blind <laughs> underscore broad. You just then want we points have with Bay Area blind mom. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, this is going to be fun in the show notes. and But it, it's really <laughs> neat to catch up with you because I've laughed a lot listening to the blind grind. Is the grind stands for like coffee because you guys always have something to drink. It does. Right. And, yeah. and it has multiple meanings, really. I mean, you know, the grind of the day, the nine to five. Five, mm-hmm. the, you know, lots, lots of meanings, but but we like to think of it as coffee, and that's why we always go and ask each other, "What's in your cup?" That's right. Yeah, I'm the moderately coffee obsessed one. I'm I dig deep into seed to cup, and so I kind of tipped the naming process in favor of a coffee related subject. And of course, if you're following the blind grind, you know that when there is a magical fifth Wednesday in each month, we switch it up and we do our our and wine. I don't know if this is a family podcast, um, <laughs> but we shift it to the afternoon and we make it a more <laughs> sassy afternoon experience. I caught that one and I thought, maybe I shouldn't have him on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I can keep it PG. I just need to dial it back. <laughs> we should have switched it to the fifth Monday of the month to do this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we do call ourselves two sassy blind bloggers. So right. the sass kind of comes out regardless of what time of day. I really like it because it's just cash talk. I'm not just sitting there wasting time listening to it. I'm usually got it playing, doing something else. So I'm catching the mm-hmm. conversation. That's an endorsement we need to get in print, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but you both say you're two busy blind women doing your stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So why don't you give us a little story on how this started? How did it start? Uh, I'll go. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Start. I'm glad you know where it started because <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I'm Serena, uh, aka Blind Broad, which has, of course, a backstory all its own. Just consider that my celebrity persona, but I, I am happy to hear Serena as well. I have known Lisa Maria since like 2004. I met her at my first national NFB convention in Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia. She claims to have minimal memory of it. And that's okay, because I was a newbie and I was all wide-eyed. Zero memory, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, dear. Uh, But we did start crossing paths a lot after that and developed a friendship. And uh, that eventually led to me moving to the Bay Area and moving in with she and her husband was supposed to be a few months. It turned into like a decade. (laughs) (laughs) 
And I don't know, I can't think of anyone else in the world that I could live with and work with. We co-worked, actually, she was my boss for a number of years. And like, we never fight and we always just kind of dance together and everything just flows oh, and we complete so each other's poetic. sentences. And <laughs> I can't think of anyone else. I, I know very few people that can do that. Like we were literally together 24 seven for years and like, not only did we not kill each other, we I don't think we've ever fought about anything. No, no, I don't think so. So, you know, it just, the years have gone by and um, I, I don't live with them anymore. I did grow up, at, you know, by my own house, like a, like a responsible grown up, but <laughs> the friendship is still going strong. And we've talked over many glasses of wine on our porches about oh i missed that stoop potentially doing some kind of business together we are about to do part three of three on do-it-yourself products and that for the most part is something we're both interested in and we've just thrown out there the ideas and fantasized about, oh, what if we start our own, you know, handmade beauty product or do it your, you know, cleaning product, smelly product line. (laughs) (laughs) And Serena's talked about coffee stuff and potentially doing a coffee cafe. You know, we've just thrown out lots of ideas and bed and breakfast. And I don't know, just sometime in the last year, it came together that we thought it would be fun to try and do a podcast together. And so we just decided to go ahead and do it. And right now it's just a Facebook live once a week. And until we figure out how to actually make it a real podcast. (laughs) A real podcast. A real podcast. Let's be absolutely clear. This was an impulsive decision on my part because I kind of snapped and decided it was a good idea for me to just start doing things that terrify me. And it's been a fantastic exercise, I got to say, from, from the backside. But we, what you did your coaching summit, your first big coaching summit, and uh, you're like, friends, I'm doing these Facebook Lives. And it's lonely because it's just me talking to the world. You're like, she, <laughs> she, she said, why don't you just come on with me and go live with me? Like, you've been following the summit and you know me. And like, we, we banter well. So I did this Facebook Facebook Live with her. And she asked me that morning, I did it in the afternoon. And it was a hot mess on my end. Um, (laughs) In terms of technology, like I forgot to turn on do not disturb. And I got an incoming phone call for a grocery delivery that was stupidly early. And so I got bounced out of the live and like I came on and like my video was sideways. And there was just and ordinarily it was a hot mess. I'm not kidding. Like (laughs) that would put me into tears in another lifetime. And I was just laughing. I was over here laughing and realizing like it doesn't matter. Matter, right we're like we're totally having fun and nobody's dying and afterwards you're like that was so great that went so well we should do a podcast <laughs> it was truly impulsive like if you know serena you know she likes to think a lot <laughs> and analyze for a very long time so i was very proud of her for like stepping up and saying yes let's do this and so when she was impulsive it truly was for her (laughs) we should do a podcast okay (laughs) i i think like the next day or that afternoon we sat down and started creating gmails and facebook pages and just do it like we'll make it a real podcast eventually but let's just i mean don't let perfect be the enemy of good just let's do it and we'll tinker with the rocket ship while it's in flight and that's exactly what we've been doing and they can find that on facebook the blind grind that's right so far we have over 200 followers so thank you followers um and we have over 20 episodes yep we have over 20 episodes and we'll get on all the things eventually all the things all the things. Mm-hmm. All of that whole list at the bottom, that'll be in the show notes. We'll put all the things in the right. show notes, all too. The things. <laughs> and there's a lot of them. We'll let it start with quiche. How's that for a transition? <laughs> I love it. All Starts with, with quiche. quiche. Yep. She had some amazing quiche the other day. I ate it. Oh, it's true. <laughs> so there's no proof, is what you're saying. <laughs> No, I have the real proof that it starts with quiche. (laughs) Serena, you have actually recipes available too. I do. I do. And as a matter of fact, I've got a little link tree that I drop in every episode on the Facebook page. And one of those links is for my email sign up. And if you drop your email to receive regular updates from me, uh, you will get an automatically delivered at no cost my 
trademark sweep the kids sweep the fridge mini crustless quiches it's a mouthful to say and it's also a delicious mouthful so <laughs> i'm a huge evangelist for ending food waste i'm really passionate about repurposing leftovers and getting every little bit of value out of the food that i bring into my house um so you can make all kinds of delicious quiches it's a it's a great way to use up leftovers um or some some veg that might be like needing to go you know, all you need to know is the proportions and the ratios. And it's right there in that recipe when you sign up for my email. So it's kind of a takeoff of everything but the kitchen sink. Yeah, sweep the fridge means you're going through the fridge and grabbing <laughs> anything you can find and toss it in there. There's protein, there's veg, and there's cheese and dairy and eggs. And of course, you can adapt and swap any of those out. If you're a vegetarian, you can just swap the proportions out with extra veg, etc. Omit the cheese. Add more veg. I started my notes and I had to look up how to spell quiche. Oh, most people. I, I do. <laughs> yeah, I, I often joke that it's I'm on a mission to make sure the world knows how to spell quiche. Q U I C H E. Just for reference. It looks kind of fun and braille. It's kind of like that word savvy. Savvy. You just, <laughs> hmm, let's see. S A, you know, <laughs> but quiche. Is it two A's or two V's? It's like bizarre. <laughs> or, or like vacuum. That's a good one too. Ooh, I always yeah. have to. I spell when it I'm with spelling, two U's and an M. <laughs> whenever I'm spelling together, I always have to say to get her. <laughs> Otherwise, I can't spell it. <laughs> How about tomorrow? A lot of people have trouble with tomorrow. Yeah, why is that? <laughs> two M's, one R. No, wait, one M, two oh. R's. I don't know. <laughs> T M. That's all I have. Tomorrow. <laughs> Well, that's great. And then we have the confidence coach. That'd be Lisa Maria. Hi. Tell us about confidence coach. What is a confidence coach? Well, so it turns out that confidence is not so easy <laughs> for some people. And so about four years ago, I left my traditional nine to five to start my own business. I founded Be Confident BU Coaching, I primarily work with women. And this year I have been niching down to moms who work and are trying to be what I call a boss mom, you know, kicking butt at home and at work and still finding time to be her, to be a human being that doesn't have little children hanging off of her or the boss at work where you have to make all of the decisions. So that's kind of where my niche is, is taking me. And I've worked with a lot of women who might come to me because, you know, they say they need help being more confident at work so that they can speak up and really get the assignments that they want or just be heard at a meeting that is, happens to be dominated by men. And perhaps they're one of two female supervisors or, or something along those lines. And with coaching, you know, you come for one reason, but you really take a deep dive into your whole life. And I work with clients who figure out really what it is they need to succeed. I never tell, this is what I love, what I, why I love coaching. I never tell you what to do, what to think, what to try. I just sit back and I ask questions and inevitably the answers within you, I just champion and cause and get you to figure out what that answer is for you. And I've worked with high level women executives who are switching jobs or switching companies. I've worked with women who have learned that if they don't practice self-care regularly, they will burn out. So, you know, how to infuse self-care into your life and, you know, how to shift your energy or reframe. Serena's always hearing me say, <laughs> let's reframe that. <laughs> <laughs> or, or me saying framing is everything, right? Yes. Yes. <sighs> framing yes. is everything. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. And I'm I kind of took a, a month off here during July and the summer to hang out with my kids and to go to New Orleans and do the vacationing thing. And in a couple of weeks when my kids start school, I hope to start up my first group cohort for women, a six-month program all about, I call it the FAB evolution 
<laughs> the fabulous evolution where we just talk more about fun and attitude shifts and balance and uh, working in small groups with women to make sure that they feel confident in every area of their of their lives. Well, we'll have to get that in the show notes so people mm-hmm. can find oh, that. We'll do. Yeah. We'll do. I believe I can say this or I can be part of it, but I heard there's a Facebook group called Badass <laughs> Women on Facebook. Yeah, there is. <laughs> <laughs> There is a hundred percent of that is my over 300 strong Facebook group for women who want to be more bad. That is a group I've had for a while. And I, I just started be a boss mom. And uh, that's just under a hundred women now. But those are all the free communities. Eventually, when I start my group coaching, we'll have a, a private mastermind Facebook group just for the women in the group. Isn't that fitting that you're on the BA podcast too? <laughs> I know. Wow. Coincidence? I don't think so. I think this I is think meant not. to be. <laughs> no. Lisa Marie, did you work with American Printing House too? I, I do. I actually contract with them now. So I worked for Lighthouse for the Blind in San Francisco for 10 years. I mostly worked in blindness nonprofit agencies ever since I was 18 in some way or Mm -hmm. another. And then I just was like, hey, I've always wanted to do my own business, have my own business. So I decided it was time to do that shortly after my third and last child was born. (laughs) And uh, but but I can never get away from the blindness community. I don't want to not really. And so one of my friends and now colleagues, again, Richard Retta approached me about working uh, with APH Connect Center for some projects. So I do a little bit of contract work with them as well. So I'm st- I've still got my toe in. There you go. I think I remember. Do you remember back in 2006 when they would have stuff out in Baltimore for NFB where they would have like scholarship groups or leadership programs and stuff? Were you ever at those? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They sometimes mm-hmm. they have like leadership seminars. Is, yeah. that, is that what you're referring yeah. to? Yeah. I was yeah. an echoing seminarian, seminarian, <laughs> seminarian. Yep, I remember you. I remember oh. you back then. <laughs> See, so many people remember me, and I feel bad every time. I'm like, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I meet so many you're people. Very I memorable. just apparently, and <laughs> my 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 own kiddos uh, know that when we are in big groups where there are lots of blind people, that if it's time for you know us to leave or they want something and I need to go with them, they pretty much tell me to seal my lips so that nobody can hear me and stop me to say hi so that they could get whatever it is they want. Mm. (laughs) I think it's the name Lisa Maria because it's one word. It's one. It is all one word, no space, no capital M. (laughs) The flip side of this is that you yourself even recognize that you have the ability to connect with somebody and within minutes make them feel like an old friend. You really do. And I'm personally in awe of this skill because I really feel like (laughs) I need several encounters with somebody to feel like I have an authentic connection with them and you're just like you know someone for five minutes and you're like okay we're on the socials I'm like yeah best friend (laughs) and you do make people feel like we've known each other forever so you know this is this is you know the power that you have thank you (laughs) I did not pay her to say that no (laughs) Wow, I didn't get those notes. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, let me. I edit this stuff, so that's what podcasting is. I know you is. do yeah. such oh, a great yeah. job at yeah, it yeah. too. Are yeah. you also on sound effects because they're very entertaining? I used to do all that more so, but sometimes it's like, like I don't need it for us, you know. I mean, nah. we're laughing and. Um, yeah. I know, I know, I know. We we got sound effects. Okay. It sounds just like you're on your show. It's all part of the magic of being us. Yeah. <laughs> was that was that you two or us three? I'm just trying to see if. I- oh, I'll take either one. I say all three. <laughs> I just want to say, listening to you guys banter here and the way you're talking here, it's just like listening to you when you're doing your Facebook live shows and stuff. So if you put a podcast together, I hope you can keep that liveliness. Have you ever heard a band that sounds better live than they do in the studio? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like music? Yeah. 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 yeah so well, she's she's broken me of my notes habit. So I'm oh, sure the improvisation man. will always be there. <laughs> you don't even know. She would have all the 
these notes. Oh, in no, our no. Calendar. She has a it... three by five card now. <laughs> no, I can't yes. sleep. Yes, oh, yes, no, that is true. It's always been a three by five card, to be mm-hmm. fair. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. I think it's, you know, to, to be fair, it the naturalness and the banter come very much so because we're just really good friends and we share a brain. And so really, it's kind of like talking to ourselves, but out loud. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> So we often have very similar thoughts at the same time, and it's kind of freaky. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I've seen you start out shows. I forget which episode. Maybe it was two. But you realized that you could do the lyrics with the Braille, and you finally <laughs> found out that it isn't, what was it, Egg? Um... Egg's Delight. <laughs> it's Metallica's not saying Egg's Delight. <laughs> I was rolling because you went into some <laughs> other ones, something about pants or another one. Oh, we could the dance, safety dance. We could dance. Everybody look at your pants. <laughs> Which cracks me up. <laughs> That's funny stuff. <laughs> I have a wild imagination, which is really useful since I have three kids. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. When you're talking about the mom stuff and all, all the moms with kids and is quality time when you can shut the bathroom door and be away from the kids for a minute. <laughs> that is self-care. Yes. There have been times where I'm in the garage with the lights off. We have a big freezer out there, an upright one, and and the freezer door is open and my head is in there eating ice cream, shoveling it in my mouth as quietly as possible. (laughs) Children are a lot of work. And I don't say that from personal experience. I'm still hanging on to that audio described in the freezer eating ice cream. (laughs) Shoveling ice cream. I do that and I don't even have kids. (laughs) <laughs> by the glow of the freezer door. That's right, by the glow of the freezer, ice melting. <laughs> there you go. What audience have you found that you've been reaching out there? I know when you start this stuff up, you think, who's going to listen? But you got over 200 followers now. What type of audience did you imagine you'd be getting and what do you got? As Lisa Maria said, you cannot get away from the blind community. And as I've been working to establish myself in, in food circles, I've still been finding that to be the case and whatever, bring it on because the more blind foodies I can collaborate with, the better off we all are. And there's also naturally our sighted friends and family and and allies are like, look what the girls are doing. And there's definitely an underlying educational component to what we're doing. We're sort of indirectly, if not explicitly targeting people who don't necessarily know a lot about blindness. And we are able to give them a little peek into what it's really like to be blind, at least if you're like a 40-something career professional and and maybe a mom. I, I have cats. I do not have actual children. But, you know, like we have all these facets to our personalities that go beyond blindness, but you can't not talk about the blindness. It's a it's such an integral component of who we are. And so I find that not only you get the fellow blind community members who yeah, we can relate to this or we can relate to that. And they're sharing on our behalf as well. But we're also extending our reach to the communities of those sighted friends and family who are in turn sharing our message out to their circles of friendship. And people are learning things about blindness that they might not have known. Like we can find bathrooms and tie our shoes, you know? (laughs) (laughs) And that's been, I think, for me, the super exciting part of it all is the audience of sighted people, whether, you know, it is our family or friends who are getting educated on blindness, like Blind Broad says. And they're seeing that blindness doesn't have to be this scary tragic thing. And it doesn't mean sitting at home eating TV dinners or something. I don't I don't know. Um, (laughs) But it can mean living an active life. And so we always try to have some sort of educational component to our lives so that people are always learning. So to me, that has been really surprising to see how that's caught on with like our extended family and community. I literally have a former 
coworker who knows quite a lot about blindness herself. She's sighted, but she's been in the blindness field forever. And she teaches at SF State. And she tells her students, go listen to these ladies. <laughs> you will learn about blindness and you will just see that it's just a part of who you are. So I'm excited that the educational field is, is telling people to listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> We're homework. <laughs> All right. There will be a quiz, by the way. <laughs> well, you, you got your DIY kitchen stuff going on, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I like that. I, I just wanted to let you know, I just got a Cosri brand, Air Fryer, and it Ooh. works with the smart device. Oh, Ooh. oh, yeah. okay. All I said was, I said, I, I named it Air Fryer. I thought it was like unique. In this house it is. <laughs> so I, 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 I asked my smart device, set Air Fryer to 400 degrees for 10 minutes. All of a sudden, the machine just goes beep and it starts going. I couldn't believe That's, it. That's wow. That I I have the wrong air fryer. Then <laughs> it's a new age, y'all. <laughs> it is. It is. And you need my children to come over and name your devices. So oh, really? We have a robot vacuum named Cutie Pie. <laughs> Yeah, they named our robot. I think it was Claude or something. I forget the name Claude? of it. Claude. Yeah, I, I, I fired him. He's French. Yeah, you you call it Claude. You're 22. You can move out now. <laughs> but that's another thing. You, your mom. I mean, you're a mom. Three kids, right? Three? Yeah, I'm three kids. Eleven, seven, and five. And you're still laughing, having fun, and doing things, you know? I try. I mean, that's why we love her. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, if you know my parents, you understand why I am the way I am. I mean, yes. my parents are phenomenal. Um, I maybe didn't think that growing up, especially since I was grounded half of my life for being mouthy. Imagine that. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I lost my vision at the age of five and my parents are 27 at the time. And I just think it's so incredible the mindset that they took on with very limited resources and just knowing that there has to be something better out there for blind kids. I, you know, I had a tutor and she was teaching me to read felt letters. And my mom's like, wait a minute, she's not going to have books made out of felt letters in college. So mm. don't blind people read those those dots. What, what are those bumpy things? <laughs> I want my daughter right? to read those bumpy things. <laughs> so, I mean, they're just in incredible people. And so they raised three kids and I was the oldest and they're pretty cool. I mean, my mom just had a birthday and I can't say how old she is because no one would believe me anyways. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, she's like, yeah, I went to the pool today. And now we're going to a seafood food restaurant and mm. your brother and his wife got cake and ice cream for me. I'm like, man, mom, you're living la vida loca. <laughs> what she's saying is share the ice cream. Don't go into the garage, into the little <laughs> freezer. <laughs> share the ice cream. So Serena, you said you had a cat? I have two. Oh, I, have I, two. I got two myself. I know what it's oh, like. Oh, they're great in pairs. They are they are a bonded pair. We adopted them right before the world shut down. And I think they were naturally anxious, like by default in the pandemic has just made it worse. So I have like the two most anxious cats ever. And Do you think during the pandemic, the cats finally said, do these people ever leave? <laughs> like, it's funny because I, I want to refer to them as my fur babies, but they're really more like really needy and demanding roommates. I mean, we set up ba their base camp was in our office. And so that's, that is their base camp, no matter, you know, they have the whole run of the whole house now, but that's always going to be their go-to safe place because that's where they were introduced to the house. And every night we all go upstairs to go to bed and we do our little, you know, they're very routine oriented, you know, they need their structure. Uh, we all go upstairs to go to bed and, you know, they, they, they race around and get all, you know, murderous, like in the evening hours, it's the evening murder. Because and, they're crepuscular. Uh, they're, they're crepuscular, which I is a love great that word. word. 
crepuscular. Oh, and then, and then, yeah, we, it means active at dawn and dusk. And dusk. Birds are also crepuscular, which mm-hmm. you know is why cats are crepuscular because they hunt birds. <laughs> so it all makes sense. You got to add the word of the day on to the, the blind grind. <laughs> oh, oh, you have just challenged me. Thank <laughs> you. I love it. I love <laughs> long, strange words like pulchritudinous and crepuscular <laughs> and hyrax. Words and... that you won't remember tomorrow. You'll go, what did she say? Um, yeah. <laughs> but that's why they can go right back on Facebook and play it again. That's right. And I'm add some add more that. hearts to We're it. Adding that. I got a stick. It's about a uh, foot and a half long. And then it has a long leader on it, like for fishing. Mm-hmm. And then on the yep. bottom one, there's this fuzzy little thing. They both attack differently. One of them is like as fast as it can. It gets the pot and it's in its mouth. Boom. Just bang. It's fast. It's like, yeah, hey, I want to show my friends when they come over. Yeah. And the other one is like, I'm going to play with this for 10 minutes before I kill it. <laughs> different cats have different hunting preferences some cats really prefer to chase bugs and birds they like to get up on their hind legs and like clap with both hands and swat mm-hmm. and some cats are ground chasers they like to they like to chase prey that's on the ground or in the water like they're fishing like they they stay low to the ground and they scoop and if you can key in on those preferences you can really get your cat's mojo going you can get them really engaged They've, they've got to get that murder out. They're perfect little killing machines. And we treat them like they're stuffed teddy bears. And they're not. They need to kill. It's very important. Even if it's just a toy mouse. <laughs> this is like a sick nursery rhyme or something. I right? know. I know. Teddy bears, sweet, murderous, killing. Sort of like an episode of the Twilight Zone or something. Yeah. They're, they're tiny little predators. And I think I think the fact that they're so much smaller and easier to scoop up and snuggle and make kissy faces at just offends them and makes them angrier. Who wrote those fables back in the day? Hans- Aesop. Aesop no, the- and Stephen King. Put the two together. King. <laughs> <laughs> I don't ever want to sleep over at your house, Sarita. I'm afraid of your cats now. <laughs> well, Serena, Lisa Maria, it's been fun listening. I feel like I didn't shut off my phone here. I was listening to your stuff earlier today, and it seems like mm-hmm. it's still going you guys are just well, natural. It's been a ton of fun talking to you. And Likewise. we've been looking forward to it since you first contacted us and super appreciate, you know, we appreciate you having us on your show. So thank you. Absolutely. I think you sassy blind bloggers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you are living proof of all these things that you hear these little cliche sayings like live the life you want. You hear them all the time. But listening to you guys and what you're talking about random with coffee it's living proof that you guys are successfully doing what you want to do living the life you want you're doing it and it's enjoyable that's the most biggest part awesome thank, thank you so you. much jeff it's been Woo! a delight i'm gonna go party now because jeffrey said <laughs> we're living the lives we want <laughs> there, I'll, I'll put it on puffy paint and so you can read it oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> When we share what we see through each, each other's, each other's eyes, eyes, we can then, we can then begin, begin to bridge, bridge the gap between, between the limited, limited expectations and, and the reality of blind abilities. And the realities of, of blind abilities. Of blind abilities. Of blind abilities.